thank you again, Secretary Millar and uh, Dr. Wilson. Good to see you. Dr. Wilson, uh, one of my very closest friends, works uh, um, for Dr. Wilson. <laughs> so we had to take a quick selfie. That was exciting to send her way. Um, and then Jim, I've, I've known Jim, Jennifer, for, for many years. And in fact, if I look around the room, I mean, I know most of you, we could have just gone and had some beer and we could have skipped this. It would have been great. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I am very excited. And listen, I want to thank you all for your safety leadership, really. Uh, we value our partnership with AASHTO and with the states, but with each of you. And, you know, you don't know it, but you, each of you inspires me every single day to be better and to do better for safety. So thank you so much for everything you do and for your partnership with me and partnership with the NTSB. You know, uh, I often hear from people, and you'll probably say this to me before I leave, that this is the time you want to see me. <laughs> no one wants to see me when something terrible happens. But you know, uh, now is the time to develop that relationship because it is critical in a state or when something tragic happens because uh, we'll be working together. Hopefully that won't happen. But in the meantime, I would love to visit your states see what you're doing, see how I can be helpful on safety, and others too, organizations, I know not just states are here. I'd love to visit with you and see how I can be helpful on safety. So, um, you know, and there will, be, there will be a crisis that happens. There will be a tragedy. You know, we're here today, unfortunately, to talk about increasing death and serious injury on our highways, on our roadways. You know, uh, numbers came out today for 2020 by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. The National Safety Council also put out numbers for 2021, and it's not a good story. You know, uh, NHTSA had uh, just a little less than 39,000 for 2020. My guess is it could exceed you know, hopefully not, but 40,000 in 2021. Because if you look at, uh, the, while there was a decrease in injuries, there was also a decrease in police reported crashes. People weren't on the roads. So those numbers, unfortunately, may go up. And so um, Roger had, had uh, I, I called him Sunday night just to catch up and you know, he said to me that uh, it's great, just like he just said, to see the NTSB so active on road safety. And, you know, for me, it really is about, because people are dying. And for me, safety is personal. This is not just my job. My entire career has been focused on safety, my mission, NTSB's mission is to be the voice for those who no longer have one. To be the voice for those who no longer have one. And so Roger mentioned in 2017 there was a derailment uh, involving Amtrak. Um, and unfortunately, three people died. But on that day, 106 other people died on our roads. And it was that derailment that got national news for days. I wasn't on the board at the time. I worked on the committee for uh, Chairman DeFazio. And so, of course, I was on the phone. And, uh, but how often do things go unnoticed, just get a two-second uh, story on the news about a traffic crash? You know, I was just in Pittsburgh, and um, bridge collapse, terrible. I mean, it really was a miracle that no one lost their life. It really was. Because, and, and I tell you, in, in that situation, you know, school was delayed two hours. Imagine if a school bus was on that bridge. So no one died, but people were gathering for days. 
There had to be some perimeter security to make sure people s stayed away from a very dangerous area while we were collecting evidence, while we were underneath the bridge. News cameras everywhere. We had press you know, conferences. <clears throat> During that same week, there was a crash in Las Vegas. Six people died, including some, some children. And we had a call. Uh, I was at Frick Park. We had a call, you know, that we're launching a team uh, to Las Vegas. Should we send a board member? And usually we send board members uh, when uh, w there's going to be a lot of media. We want to make sure that our investigator in charge is able to do their work, or we meet with families, or another reason. I, I very heavily lean in on we want to be active. But someone on the call had said, and, and it's a natural reaction, well, everything's going to be cleaned up. So should we send somebody? And my response was, hell yes, we are. Because it's up to us to speak for those who can't. We're going to be there. It's not the cameras coming to us. We're going to talk about road safety. We're going to talk about our recommendations. And we're going to highlight a significant issue and a public health crisis on our roads. And that's what we did. So how we think about safety, how the public thinks about safety, how we talk about safety, informs how we act on safety. And so I, I don't know, hopefully I'm not dating myself. <laughs> I don't know if you remember those choose your own adventure books when you were a kid. They were great. Right? You're reading through the book and you get to page 56 and it says, hey, if you believe 94% of all crashes are due to human error, go to page 107. If you believe in zero, go to page 56. <laughs> so you'd go to 107 and you'd read everything to the end and then you'd say, well, what if I pick the other way? And you'd go back and you'd read the other side of the story. It was great. Those are now going to come back because I mentioned it. If you tweet that, <laughs> it might come back. But seriously, 94% of crashes are due to human error. Not true. Not at all. I've heard it so many times. So many times. And, you know, uh, I took to Twitter. You know, I'm going to tell you, I have a great team at the NTSB. We, we're, we're, you know, we call ourselves hashtag Team 15, 15th chair. And, um, you know, Eric Strickland is our executive officer. Sarah Pirro, third day on the job, yeah. <laughs> his senior advisor. <laughs> um, she, hopefully, she'll be happy about this in a few months. Um, and uh, Kelly Hessler, also part of our team, came from the National Safety Council. I mean, Eric came from GHSA. So if you want to blame anybody for my being very active on highway safety, blame Eric. Sarah, House Appropriations, and before that, CBO. And then uh, Kelly, National Safety Council. And then Stephen Stadius came from the Senate Commerce Committee. We have a great team. I drive them bananas. Yep, I do. Because, and... <laughs> A few years ago, we come, we come back from uh, 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 Christmas, you know, everybody went, went away for, for Christmas, and we come back, and it's like, what's up, guys? And I said, oh, good news, I got a Twitter account, and I'm verified. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a nightmare for everyone at the NTSB. They're like, wait, that's the first board member who's ever been on Twitter. What is she going to say? So when I became chair, the whole conversation was, ooh, do you want me to take your Twitter account over? Because it could be your official chair account. I'm like, nope, not touching it, <laughs> right? So when you, when you talk with me on Twitter, that's actually me. Nobody wants to touch it. Nobody wants to, <laughs> and I won't let them. You should see my draft folder. Yep, that's usually. <laughs> That's usually when I send them something and say, I really want to send this. They're like, no. 
No, seriously. Um, 94% of all crashes are due to human error. I took to Twitter and I said, stop with the 94%. And here's why. And let me just, it, first of all, it's factually wrong. I, I think it was like that game of telephone. Or, you know, you whisper in somebody's ear and at the end of the room, it's totally different. So, you know, it, it comes from a 2015, uh, you know, traffic safety facts from NHTSA. But let me read you what it really says, driver 94%. It says, the 94% represents the last failure in the causal chain of events leading up to the crash. The 94% is not intended to be interpreted as the cause of the crash, nor as the assignment of the fault to the driver. 94% is a dangerous mantra. It's dangerous, and here's why it's dangerous. It says that everyone except the driver is powerless to prevent death. That's what the 94% does. We are not powerless. But, you know, does that mean that drivers don't play a role? Certainly not. Of course not. There is a role. But, and humans, humans will make mistakes, of course. It was the end of, or beginning of November, it was the first board meeting I chaired, and I normally take VRE every day. That's the commuter train here. I love it. They don't like it because I start texting or uh, emailing them at six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I try not to. Um, but uh, this one day, it was a board meeting, and I didn't know how late I'd be. So uh, I, it was the first ever I chaired, and I drove in, and I was sitting at a light, and um, uh, I was rear-ended by a driver who was going 50 when he hit me. Mm -hmm. And he and I do I do here's here's some good advice I do when I when I'm behind another vehicle I always make sure I can see the tire on the road in front of me so there's enough space he hit me right into that car I walked away with a bruise and a concussion and that was it I mean he never put on his brakes you know and and uh, at some point you know my husband came over the ambulance was there <clears throat> and at some point i mean he was very uncomfortable it was just awkward and uh, he said so what do you do <laughs> <laughs> this is going to make him feel terrible he's already having a bad day so i took it easy on him and just just you know made up something uh, I did, you know, it's terrible safety management, but I did go over to, uh, I, I did have my husband drop me off to the last train, made it in, did the whole board meeting, looked at Eric and said, I am feeling a little sore. <sighs> but uh, yeah, humans will make mistakes. But like me, nobody should lose their life in that crash. Nobody should lose their life. And everyone, here's where the 94% <laughs> doesn't make sense. Everyone shares responsibility to make sure that person goes home at night. Redundancy. One part of the system fails, the rest of the system works and prevents the crash. So back to choose your own adventure. We can choose to talk about safety in a way that, lead, in a way that leads to a dangerous outcome. 94%. Or we can choose zero, a better number. You know, at the beginning of February, I read a, a column in the Washington Post, and I'm going to read a little bit about it, uh, from it. It was in early February. And it says, the transportation secretary has spoken, illuminating why early in this third pandemic year, Americans by the many millions are ignoring government supervision. Zero, Pete Buttigieg recently proclaimed, is the only acceptable number of deaths and serious injuries on our roadways. Buttigieg actually is going to have to accept many vehicular deaths and injuries because the road to zero is paved with pipe dreams. When Buttigieg identifies as the only acceptable social outcome, something that is unattainable, we see how government forfeits the public's trust. 
when Thomas Carlyle was told that the New England transcendentalist Margaret Fuller had exclaimed, I accept the universe, he remarked, she'd better. I will never accept anything other than zero. You should never accept anything other than zero. What would be the number we would recommend? 20,000, 10,000? It should be zero. These aren't just numbers. These are family members. These are friends, people we know. You know, it's interesting, Towards Zero Deaths has this amazing video that I love. And, you know, it, it's a, there's an interviewer and, you know, she, she starts off and says to, to the public, just on the street, you know, uh, what do you think about all these deaths on our roads? And then she asks, do you think we could get to zero? And the, and the response over what? No, we couldn't do that. Of course not. How could we do that? That's impossible. And then she asks, what if it was your mom or your dad? All the answers change. Well, of course they can't die. It's incredible. It's a great video if you go to their website. Crashes are not acceptable. Crashes are not inevitable. Crashes are 100% preventable. And so uh, when, I, when I read something like that, I do think it's, it's dangerous. It's dangerous to talk about death that way. You know, there was a time where aviation thought that zero was impossible. <clears throat> I remember. I remember very clearly because I lived here when Air Florida crashed in the, into the 14th Street Bridge. That was terrible to watch. On this, we were investigating that, and on the very same day, there was a uh, derailment of Metro. Very same day. It was an awful day for our nation. And at, around that time, we believed that 80% of aviation accidents, and they do use the word accidents in aviation because that's the way everybody if, doesn't point fingers at each other. That's the way everybody comes together. We believed at the time and would say 80% of all aviation accidents was due to pilot error. That changed over time. We stopped talking about it that way in aviation. Everyone who shared responsibility started coming to the table to get to zero. In 2020, zero deaths in commercial passenger aviation. Zero in, in seven of the last 10 years. If you know net jets, you know, there's a, a section of aviation, 91K, that's how they're regulated. There were um, uh, incidents happening and they developed their own set of reg regulations with the FAA. Since 2005, seven accidents in 91K, zero fatal. They ask me all the time, what can I do better? How can I improve safety? And they're at zero. I tell them, don't be complacent. Keep going. And so um, when one death occurs in aviation, everybody comes to the table. Pilots, flight attendants, air traffic control, airlines, airports, manufacturers, suppliers, regulators, survivors, families of, of those who lost their lives. And so, you know, before, as I close, I want, I, if you walk away with anything from this discussion, I want to leave three things for you to consider. Because like I said, like I opened, every day you inspire me. You don't know it, but you do. And every day I think about how I can be better, how I can do better for safety and for the NTSB. Over the last seven, seven months as chair, I, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting when you're the head of an agency and it's multimodal because you can see different things in different modes. And the, and the different ways they address safety. 
and the engagement among how different modes handle engagement. And so I'd ask you to consider number one, listen with your heart. Listen with your heart. When you, you are going to find people who disagree with you, you're gonna disagree with them. I mean, it's already, I, I've watched some of the you know, tweets back and forth on highway safety. You're going to disagree. That's fine to disagree. But I tell you, if you sit down and listen with your heart, you will find one commonality. You're both there, there to get to zero. And that commonality, with that, you will find a way forward to work together. You know, when I, on, I, I talk about Twitter, but recently, um, Senator Ilias uh, from, from Washington, he's the chair of the Transportation Committee in the Senate. Um, he said 94% of all crashes are due to human error. Well, everybody jumped all over his Twitter. I mean, you would, it, it was, and they tagged me. Oh, go talk to Jennifer Homendy, right? And I'm like, oh, I feel so bad. Also did that to the state of Utah, so sorry. Um, and, you know, and I, you know, he handled it beautifully. He responded very positively. Oh, let's talk about that. And it was just such a good engagement over social media. And I watched, I watched, you know, that night to see it all play out. And I, and I finally, I retweeted at him and I said, I'd love to t sit down and talk about our shared goal of improving safety. Two days later, we met, and he said, I was wrong. You know, I said, no, no, you, 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 you used what you had. You weren't, you, your goal, your end goal is zero. You're not wrong. And now we're working together on drunk driving. We're working together on speed limiting technology. You never know, even disagreements. So listen with your heart. Number two, be vulnerable. Do not be afraid to be vulnerable. When I took, before I, uh, when I, when I was nominated as chair, I spent three years developing relationships with our uh, people within our agency. And then when I was nominated as chair, between the time I was nominated and the time I was confirmed, I talked to people. I call all, all throughout the agency. And I'd say, not just leadership. In fact, I tried to avoid leadership. And I said, what do you think my vision should be? Most people would say, you don't have one? <laughs> of course I have one. Might not be right, though. What I think is right doesn't mean what's, it's right. So I wanted to hear, what is your vision? What's going wrong? Well, sure, you could tell me what's going right. What's going wrong? What, do we, what are we doing wrong? What do we need to change? And people talked to me. They opened up. And you know what? That, those conversations were all alike. They all raised the same issues. And that became my vision for the NTSB. So I, I, and I, I, you know, we're going to lead by example. On June 2nd, we're gonna have a summit focused on highways to bring everybody in. And we're gonna talk about what is the NTSB doing wrong? And what can we do better? I don't wanna hear the great things. I wanna hear how we can improve. I wanna hear how we can better serve you and serve the public. And I hope you will join me in that. I do encourage you to not worry about being vulnerable, listening, accepting differences, talking through them, accepting criticism. That's okay. It's not bad. It's an opportunity for growth. And finally, I would end with be bold. I do not pull punches when it comes to safety. I mean, <laughs> Jennifer and Jim know safety's my thing. I am loud. 
That's my job. It's my passion personally. And I will continue to be that way. Because thousands of families are counting on it. Thousands of families, people who don't have a voice, who don't have a platform, I'm going to speak for them. And so I hope we can work together on safety. I'm very excited to visit with you and work with each of you as we go forward, because I know for a fact, because we've seen it at the NTSB, we can get to zero. Thank you.